Live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reinforce 2019. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and its ecosystem partners. Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage in Boston, Massachusetts. Here for two days, AWS, Amazon Web Services, reinforced their inaugural conference around security. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Our next guest, Andy Miller, Senior Director, Global Public Cloud at Sophos, based out of the UK and here in Burlington, Massachusetts. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Looking good, love that jacket, nice color on you. <laughs> you got the memo? I got the memo. Cube jacket. <laughs> Thanks for having me, it's great to be here, it's great to be a part of uh, AWS's first security event, security focused event, not by coincidence, uh, head, you know, happening right here where our US headquarters is, we're very excited to be a part of it. Wanted to uh, share with you guys, I brought you a little, a little gift. Socks awesome. are definitely a Thank part you. of Love our- Thank you, the socks. Okay, I'm wearing them tomorrow, <laughs> so you. we'll do a little close up on that. Thank They're you very much. Clean. Stu no Miniman will love this, he loves the socks. Now the replaces Star Wars socks for those. Thank you, Andy. <laughs> Andy, thanks. So I want to get your impression of the show. Obviously, inaugural event, um, and it's interesting. You look at Amazon. We've been covering Amazon for eight years with the Cube. Uh, prior to that, um, uh, just as a company, love the company. We've obviously, success of cloud is no brainer. But reInvent is their name of their global conference on the commercial side uh, for all their customers, mm -hmm. and everything else they call summits. This is not a summit. This is not an Amazon Web Service summit. This is a branded event with the word re not invent, but reinforce, mm -hmm. so it kind of gives that a call out. Good call from those on their front, is it needed? Why is this show so important? What's your opinion on that? I, I think it absolutely is. It's, it's very helpful to customers to help them to understand their responsibilities when it comes to security in the cloud. And just like reInvent was essentially reinventing the network into a digital in, environment, this is reinforcing their environment, understanding what their responsibilities are, where the cloud provider's very secure infrastructure ends and where their responsibilities with applications and data that resides in the cloud starts. What, what does your data show in terms of the, the evolving threat landscape? I mean, there's one school of thought that says, okay, security in the cloud actually, well, it was a concern early on. People say, oh, it's better. That maybe raises the bar and it kind of lowers the ROI for the bad guys, but what are, you, what are you seeing? But at the same time, it's more global and distributed, which sort of opens up holes. What are you guys seeing? So what we're seeing is, is that you know, it, the cloud's interesting in that there's not necessarily anything that is uh, new or unique from an attack perspective, it's more of an attack surface perspective. And what I mean by that is, is that you know, with an on-premise environment, sometimes controls are very easy to place around new instances, new workloads being stood up, um, a change control process that is very controlled, key carded data, data centers and so forth. Cloud accounts will operate very differently, and one of the things that makes the cloud great is the speed at which you can go to market and stand up new resources. That also creates challenges for customers when it comes to visibility and securing those assets. Yeah, I mean, the guy from uh, uh, Liberty Mutual today in the keynote said his number one challenge is just keeping up with Amazon, the pace right. of change. I mean, you're seeing that in your, your client base, and how Absolutely. are they dealing with it? Absolutely, one of the conversations that I frequently have with customers when it, when it comes to the uh, visibility and keeping up with Angle is, is I frequently will say to customers, pull out your cloud bill if you are aware of and know everything that, that it's on that bill and where it came from, you know, frankly, I'd be very surprised. A lot of them struggle with that, with being able to keep up with that. And it's a, it's a again, a, a, a double-edged sword. It's great as far as a business standpoint and being able to extend your business globally within minutes but it's also a challenge for them from the security standpoint. And you talk about the challenges that businesses are up against when it comes to cloud security, because on-premises has a, you know, decades of experiences dealing with security, the old days of perimeter-based security, some still do that. Now the perimeter's pretty much gone away with cloud. And cloud native has a different approach. So there seems to be a lot of questions around you know, what to do. What are those challenges that in, in cloud security specifically that businesses face? So I, you, you hit the first one, right? The first one is, is this concept of I build a castle and put a big wall around it and a moat around it no longer exists, right? The, the, the perimeter is a memory. Um, another one is, is, as I mentioned before, the speed at which resources are added to the cloud, that's difficult for customers because you, you can't see it, you can't secure it, right, if you don't know it exists. And then the third thing is, is really being able to understand how you make security happen within the cloud because those tools that you used on, on premise and, and in your own perimeter 
don't necessarily exactly translate to the cloud. And it's important to have solutions that are designed for that and that not only work and operate well within the cloud, but also don't take away the benefits of the cloud. If you have a solution that's going to slow you down or make it where you can't innovate at the speed of the cloud, you might as well keep it on-prem, you're taking away all the benefit of the cloud. So, so are you finding, I mean, you know, a lot of times, the early cloud days were a lot of so-called craplications, just going to the cloud, okay. So maybe not as much credit card information, so maybe it's not as valuable, but are you seeing people hitting the cloud sort of more today um, than say certain on-prem environments? Is it escalating? What does your data show? So there's a, there was a study done uh, not too long ago that showed uh, projected, uh, past and projected cloud growth from 2017 to 2022. And what was interesting was the cloud, the cloud services revenue growth was expected to grow by double. The cloud security spend was expected to grow by more than three times. And we think that was in large part of customers understanding their responsibilities in the shared security model, but also a product of exactly what you say, crapplications, right? Yeah. One of our first customers that I think of was a convenience store chain. The very first things they moved, store locator and nutritional information applications. If something went wrong with those, yes, it's not great for your business that they can't find your store, but it's not credit card data, it's not personal information, so on and so forth. As businesses start moving, really key to the business applications, ERP systems, things like that, with real data that's at risk, that's where their focus on security is so, real So strong. there's a lot of confusion out there, and as I walk around the, the show floor here, I see, we secure the cloud, we secure the cloud, no, we <laughs> secure the cloud. And then I hear from Amazon, we have a shared responsibility model, we secure the infrastructure. A lot of customers think, hey, Amazon has great security, you know, so does Google, so does Microsoft, I'll put it in the cloud, I'll be good to go. Right. Help us clear up some of that confusion. What's your point of view on that? Yeah, I think that, that you know, when you look at it, customers were at one point extremely afraid of the cloud. And the cloud providers themselves did a great job of talking about why you could trust their infrastructure. In the process, I think customers have a difficult time understanding where their responsibility begins. And what we always like to say is, is the cloud provider is responsible for the security of the cloud. You, Mr. Customer, are responsible for the, for the security in the cloud. And the reason that's important is, is you know, the fact is the cloud providers could potentially provide the security in the cloud, but the measure of control that they would have over the applications that you build, the applications that you deploy, who you give access to, and what you allow them to do would be so great, I don't think it would be a really positive experience. Too many for permutations. Yes. Because the criticism early on in cloud security wasn't that the security was bad, it was that I couldn't enforce the edicts of my organization. There weren't enough features, and now today it's like, you're drinking from this fire hose of features. So is that really the issue? It's, it's up to you to figure out what works for your organization and then apply it. We heard today you got to opt in for things like encryption. You make sure you, right. make sure you opt into each availability zone. So that's an individual customer choice. Amazon provides the tools. Okay, but then where do you pick up? Where does Sophos pick so, up? So then that's a great segue. So as an example, our new uh, Sophos Cloud Optics product does a great job with that. For instance, uses the AWS CIS benchmarks, and that is a, a, a heavy, heavy document that may be difficult for a customer to ingest, but we can run against all of your workloads, your S3 buckets, and see that you're in compliance with that CIS benchmark policy. That's a great place to start. Maybe you have some uh, compliance regulations that you have to follow that have a security component to it, such as PCI, for example. And they would lead you towards things like identity and access management. They would lead you towards, am I following a good password policy, a good updating policy? Am I sure that my S3 buckets are encrypted and not accessible to the internet without some sort of protection in place? All the evolving uh, cloud security landscape's changing on the threat side. You got now detection. Okay, alerts, all these things are going on. Um, you guys have some data on the cyber criminal activity. Um, up, down, is it more complex, harder to crack? Is it people cracking it? Certainly we know people are always trying. You can attack anything. We've seen foreign states you know, enabling these groups out there. You're seeing yeah. all kinds of cyber criminals. What's the data showing? So the data shows, I, th I think the most compelling thing, we did, a, we did a study that we commissioned earlier this year where we placed workloads in 10, different, uh, 10 of AWS's most popular data centers around the world. And what we saw was the first attempt to compromise one of those assets took all of 52 seconds. 52 seconds after we launched it, it was, there was an attempt to compromise it. 
More compelling was the fact that on average it took a some total of 40 minutes was the average time before an, uh, an attempt to compromise uh, took place. And on top of that, once the asset was discovered, on average every 13 times every single minute of every single hour of every single day over a 30 day period, someone was attempting to compromise this. We ended up totaling over five million attempted compromises in a 30 day period on 10 assets. So I think the, the biggest thing is not so much the techniques, but the level of automation that the bad guys have going on. They know that there are, uh, they know there are assets out there that are not in a state that they necessarily should be, and they are doing their level best to find them as absolutely What makes the cloud so attractive to the cyber criminals? I, I think the biggest thing is, is that as customers go from the application into some real applications, they know that there is a lot of data there. They also know that customers are, well this is a new uh, a newer platform for them, and they may be struggling with understanding exactly what they need to do differently than they did on-prem in order to secure so, it. So follow up on that, how do you approach cloud security and how is it different than on-prem? So the biggest difference is, is can it work within the fabric of the cloud? Is there tight integration with the things that the cloud providers offer? And do you not in any way hamper the great things about the cloud, scalability, the, the uh, option to be available in a matter of seconds. If you are hampering that, then that's not security that's really going to work well. It's the whole benefit of the cloud in the first place, mm -hmm. right, so. So let's talk about your cloud solution. What's the big um, problem that you, you guys solve? So, you know, we have a several different solutions that are available from a next generation firewall to our host protection. Our newest offering, Southwest Cloud Optics, is really about helping them to gain that visibility, to understand exactly what they have running in the cloud, prevent it, uh, or present a topology map that shows them how it connects, how it communicates both internally and to the outside world, and then to constantly and continuously evaluate uh, where they are in a, in so a that's visibility into, into threats. Yep, and Help security look for quality as alerts. Well. Yep. Okay, so what's the customer um, uh, orientation right now? Uh, red, yellow, green. <laughs> it seems to me it's always red. But so yeah, we asked someone earlier, "What's a good day in security?" It's like when we're still in business. You know, <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of pressure. Again, the hacking just shows you that the uh, it's easy to attack. Certainly, seconds to minutes, things are being compromised. It's going to happen on-premise as well. What, what's, the, what's the state of the union in your view on? I, I think for customers there is a feeling sometimes, and I think we as security vendors need to be careful about this, of not presenting uh, the world as impossible to secure, because I believe that it is absolutely possible to secure the world. I think there are some things that customers need to do. I think it's difficult for them sometimes to cut through some of the uh, misinformation, the marketing spend, and so on and so forth that's out there but it's you know, really incumbent upon them to look and read through the materials that are provided by the cloud providers to understand where their responsibilities begin and end, and then find the solutions that they've always used on-prem and been successful with that are ported to the cloud. And if they're not ported to the cloud, to look for a different vendor. So why Sophos? So Sophos has been around for uh, 30 years. We have a long history. We've been a security company, always a security company. Um, and we have, frankly, what is a rather long track record in the cloud. We first ported our firewall to the cloud six years ago. We've continued to innovate in the cloud. We are able to do things that other vendors are not to support things that customers want to do. Uh, auto scaling, outbound gateway, things like that. Um, and we continue to innovate that platform as well as add key pieces to our platform as such as our cloud optics which interestingly enough came to us as we were shopping for it as a customer to support our own central infrastructure that runs in AWS. Our security guys thought, hey, we need a product that will help us with visibility and posture management, and then they turned to the organization and said, hey, this is a great product, we ought to look at buying this company, and that's, yeah. that's how that, that acquisition came about. And so what's new with the company? What's going on? What are you guys doing? You got a lot of gear at Amazon. What are the things you're working on that's important to tell? Yeah, we're, we're basically at this point, uh, you know, we, with that acquisition of Optics happened, it was a company called Avid Secure. Uh, that just went down in January of this year. We uh, released in the first week of April uh, our own skin softless version of the product, and we're really looking to continue that innovation. Um, uh, our theme this year for our company was Evolve. We feel that as the world evolves, security evolves, and we have to evolve yeah. as well. Um, and so there's a real focus on constantly evolving our products, innovating, and trying to stay one step ahead of the bad guys, unfortunately. Andy, you know, you, you've been around, we've been around, we've seen all waves come and go. 
client server mainframe, all the back of those days to, to now. What do you think the most important story in the security industry is these days? What, what is that needs to be told that, that's, that either is being told or needs to be amplified or isn't being told? What do you think is the high order bid in terms of the most important story? I, I think there's two, two fronts to that. One is, is, as I mentioned, Evolve was a big, uh, a big point of discussion in our um, internal meetings as well as our partner conferences and helping customers to understand that their world has to evolve as well. The idea of a perimeter, for instance. There are a lot of companies that still try to stick to that idea of I can build a wall around my business, and the reality is, is between mobile devices, between every employee practically has a laptop now, the idea of, of keeping that, that castle wall around your business is, is just unrealistic. And so, customers have to understand that. They also have to understand that a migration to the cloud is inevitable, and the sooner that they embrace that, the sooner they'll get the benefits of it and the sooner that they can begin the journey to the cloud. That's, that we feel it's inevitable. Andy, great insight. The evolving security threat landscape here on theCUBE live coverage covering AWS Reinforce. We'll be right back with more after this short break. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back.